Hello, and welcome to today's podcast. I'm Susan Guthrie, your host, and today I have a special guest, another of my friends that I have recently met on Instagram. You guys know I love to find my colleagues and friends on Instagram. It truly is my social network, right? Um, but today I am joined by Alex Beatty. She is one half of the group at Divide and Thrive. So Alex, first, thank you so much for coming on and joining me. This is such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, this is you and I talked a little while ago about something that you and your partner have, your business partner have come up with. Um, I want to mention Jenny Pithy is your business partner. Yay, Jenny. And <laughs> we, I was excited. I mean, I truly, I, I get excited a lot. My, my listeners are probably out there going, well, Susan, you say you're excited all the time, but I, I get excited because every little step that we make in making divorce easier, um, less conflictual, less difficult, more understandable, less overwhelming. Every single step we make is, is making the experience better for people. And you and Jenny have really done something uh, with Divide and Thrive that I think is going to make a big difference. So we're going to talk about that today and why it makes a big difference. Um, so, so let's dive in. Um, why, this is all about getting organized around divorce, right? You're really tackling that overwhelm that I just mentioned. So, you know, let's start there uh, because I know you have your own backstory about where this came from. And I think people love to hear the backstories because it really helps them to understand why you did what you did, but also it helps them feel not so alone. So, yeah. and that's, let's start that's there. it. That's a great um, point. And that was actually the catalyst for all of Divide and Thrive was to um, make people feel a lot less isolated and alone during a, a time in life that can make you feel really vulnerable um, about your present and your future. And if you don't know anybody else who's gone through a divorce, which was me <laughs> when I was going through it, it can feel that much more kind of isolating. So um, as I mentioned, this kind of originally started when I went through my split about five years ago. And when I knew that the end was near for my marriage, I got really focused on, uh, on what I could do that was going to help me kind of get an anchor during this tumultuous time. And so for me, the first thing I did was I acknowledged the emotional side of what I was going through. I wrote myself a little letter uh, just to, to my future self. Yeah, which was for me a game changer because the truth is emotional um, side of divorce and business side of divorce never should meet. Like you should acknowledge both, but but let them dance separately. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, th so that um, was a nice little practice for me to acknowledge. I also went to therapy, which I found really helpful. And I tried to seek out other who had been where I was. Um, and I have the best friends you would ever want to meet. They're all married. <laughs> so I kind of had to start from scratch. So after kind of dealing with the emotional side of what I was going through, I knew I needed to deal with the upcoming business side. And to that, I assigned myself the job of getting all of my essential documents together. So I had everything at my fingertips when I was, you know, meeting with potential attorneys and mediators for the process. And I also got really granular in figuring out what it costs to live my life every month. And that impacted me in such a positive way um, because Divorce, the idea of divorce is so triggering when it comes to finances. People make um, a big change if you're going from two income household to one, or maybe you only had one you know, person working in the relationship. So having those numbers in front of you so you can make smart choices and, and just be aware of the realities of your life makes a big difference and alleviates a ton of anxiety. So to that, I took my scrubby little binder in when I was meeting with people and the attorney I ended up going with, I went through mediation, which was great. I did have somebody I worked with on the side just because I'm not a divorce lawyer. So, <laughs> 
And Note it was to like, self. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And everything we're talking about today is an investment in your future, right? So I knew that by hiring somebody just to look over my shoulder was an investment in my future. And when I came in with my notes, she was like, whoa, I have never had anybody so prepared before, but it came naturally to me. So that resonated with me and kind of going back to, I have the best friends in the whole world. They're all, all married. I, the other component was I really wanted to connect with other people who were out there going through it. So that's the other part of Divide and Thrive on social media is really giving people a place where they can hear other people's stories. They can get great resources all for free. You know, it's the, it's the hub that Jenny and I both wanted when we were going through our split. So that's the origin story in a nutshell. Yeah, which is so fantastic because you've, I, and there's three things I think I want to break out from that to talk about. So first, the letter to your future self. I love that idea so very much and that you had the presence of mind in, you, you know, you referenced it as the, you know, when you realized divorce was, was happening for you to have the presence of mind to sit down and know that someday, you know, to talk to your future self, to center yourself in that way um, is really remarkable. Can you share just a little bit about what was in there? Oh, I, yes, I can. And it's funny, you know, I don't know how I had the presence of mind to do it. I just knew that I needed some hope. Right. And so that that's where the springboard was. And I just wrote down what kind of life I, I was living. It was, it was me in the future writing this letter. Like, this is the life I'm enjoying. This is how my kids are. I feel really how I was feeling. So I could have something to look forward to. And just like any letter, or if you do a new year's resolution, I just tucked it away. I sealed it away. Just knowing it was out there was enough. And that was part of, um, it's very much a part of the divide and thrive divorce organizer, because we have a whole section that's all about goals and the emotional side. And it really came from that, that, that little letter that I wrote. Well, and that's, I mean, that's a beautiful just thought and exercise. So for those who are listening, I always like them to have some great takeaways from episodes. That's one takeaway I might suggest to everyone right now is, you know, take out that pen and paper or put those fingers on a keyboard when this episode is over and, and, and think about what you might want to say to your future self, because that word you used, I think is central to this. And, you know, the entire reason I do the podcast and why it's called divorce and beyond is so that people have hope. Yes. It's so important. And that's what it gave me. And it's also, it's the beginning of Look, divorce, even in the best of circumstances, is a a big challenge. It's a big life change and can feel scary and overwhelming. And if you have things to look forward to, divorce can be a great opportunity to create your next chapter. It does not, divorce doesn't define you. How you move through it um, just speaks to your character and helps you build the next chapter you want. Yeah. And, and so critical for people. And then the, the next thing that I just really jumped out at me and what you were saying was that you on your own pulled together your information, got your finances, got your documents together, put them in a binder. What many people out there probably don't know is divorce attorneys or any attorney, really, we tend to work from binders. Um, so if I were ever going into a hearing or a trial situation, I had my, you know, hearing binder or my trial binder all nice and organized and everything. It sounds like you showed up in your divorce attorney and mediator's offices with your own binder. I did because for my other, my other work that I do, I always created binders for projects. So it, it was second nature to me and it just spoke to kind of my natural desire to be on top of things. And to take control of of, a time in life that felt really out of control. It gave me something really solid to hold on to. And so also in the planner, you have the option of printing it out and putting it in a binder, but it's also, you can use it on an iPad or a computer. So any way you choose it, it's portable. So you can take it to your meetings with your mediator or an attorney, or if you're on a Zoom, you have everything right in front of you. You know, it's empowering. It's empowering and it puts you in a position again, to navigate divorce with a lot more certainty um, and puts you in a position to ask some real good questions while you're going through it. Yeah, it's, it's actually a critical component. And the one that 
people, I call it ostrich syndrome. Most people, when they're feeling yeah. overwhelmed, want to stick their head in the ground or they want to hire professionals to do everything for them. And although yeah. you can do that, and I, I, I love my divorce team professionals, yeah. there is true empowerment in having a grasp of things yourself. That um, is so true. You just have to, I, I, for yourself, you have to, um, and then my third prong, the third prong sort of your project that I do want to make sure we, we touch on, uh, because you guys are, are kind of killing it on, first of all, on Instagram and then on TikTok. <laughs> you guys have over 35,000 followers on TikTok. Woo! It's, it's uh, look, the social media part was all really new. When we launched Divide and Thrive, it was a year ago. Um, we, we launched everything on social media about six months before we launched the product because the, the binder, excuse me, the planner was in, you know, the production stage at that point. And so we really wanted to get out there and be a part of the community, the divorce community on social media, which is the best community in the whole world. This did not exist when I was going through my split. And um, that was the other focus of getting out there and being able to help change the narrative of divorce to empower people in all the TikToks I do. I, if you go through the TikToks for divide and thrive, it's divide and thrive plan on TikTok. I, I tell you exactly what to do. You have the option. If you want more help, please use the planner. It's going to walk you through. It's like having a personal trainer. It's great. But the whole point is I want to empower people out there. I want to give them the basics of what to do and take it and run with it. If you can, the other videos, there, there's humor to be found. There's kind of divorce resources. We've built up our library on Instagram with great conversations with divorce professionals. I'm hoping to have rope you into that at some point, you know, whether it's attorneys, mediators, financial planners, uh, therapists, so on. I mean, it keeps going on and on. I, I just want it there for people. So they have access to things that I didn't have access to. And everything's on our website as well. It's, it's just, we're trying to build we're trying to build the place that we wanted, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and yeah, you know, I got divorced eons and eons ago, but the reason why I started a podcast four years ago and why I keep doing it is exactly the same. I want to change the narrative around divorce. I want to take the 30 plus years of stuff that's in here and put it out there. And I want people to know they're not alone and their support and, and yeah. you're doing the same thing, but in a really, um, what I think of is, is critically a uh, new way. And you've broken it down it, into the spoon fed approach. Um, and so I do want to touch on, cause you've, you've talked about the planner, but let's just outline what the planner is. And I want to emphasize to people, this is not a commercial for the planner. Uh, although, you know, there, there's very good reasons to use it, but as you pointed out, it, it stemmed from your own experience. So yeah. what, what is the planner? So so when I went through my split, um, as I mentioned, I was looking for other people and I started meeting other people going through a divorce and like anything in life, it was like a buddy system. So I started sharing, here's what I did to prepare, right? I would just lay it out and then more people would get referred to me. Jenny was one of those people. And we realized we had something that was working for people that was saving them a lot of time and money when they were coming, you know, meeting with divorce attorneys and mediators because they had done their homework. They'd done the administrative stuff. Right. So that by the time they were meeting with you, you could get to work and they were the best advocate for themselves because they understood what was going on. So we created a digital divorce planner um, that walks you through what to do, how to get organized for your divorce. So there are three sec major sections. One is setting goals. And that kind of goes back to that letter that I wrote. So yep. it walks you through um, where you are now, where you want to be, how you're feeling. Again, going back to there's an emotional side to divorce and you need to acknowledge it and separate it from the business side. The business side, this next section is the get organized section where we break down in detail everything you need to have at your fingertips, what statements, what documents, um, so that when you are meeting with your representatives, or even if you're filing on your own, you, you have everything you need at your fingertips. You're not wasting your time or your money. And then, as I mentioned, the last is 
figuring out your financial realities. So all three of those components are in there. We have a very detailed budget list, again, that walks you through what expenses you need to plug in to figure out how much money you have coming in every month, how much going out. Um, and it, it, when I went to my financial planner, who I also helped through her split, <laughs> and she thought, she was like, I've never seen you know, somebody walk in with this kind of detail. And it was something that just felt natural, quite frankly. It was going through the experience, uh, creating the planner to give people um, this, this way to take control of the process and to set themselves up to, to empower them really just has been a joy. Like none of this has felt like work. So I'm thrilled that the planner, uh, we launched it in July. We've had steady sales throughout and the reviews and feedback we're getting are phenomenal. And I don't know what to say. It definitely goes back to coming from a personal place and, and trying to help be helpful. Yeah, well, and I always, you know, do say that at our core as human beings, we want to help other people. And that's why we're spending our time doing this and, and putting that information out there. And, you know, you've really touched on a couple of critical points in what you've pulled together in your planner. And I can say this as a divorce attorney and mediator for such a long time. The first part where you have people work through their goals and, and where they're going, start pulling the curtain back on the future. That is so important. I can tell you that it is the number one thing people do not do when they are going into divorce. And it's very hard to be the advocate attorney for someone, the mediator who's trying to help them figure out how they're going to get to a future if they've never thought about it. Yeah. And the future is not scary. You know, divorce is just an experience. It's just a, it's a process you're going through. Your life is continuing. You know, we're all thrown these challenges in life and divorce doesn't define you at all, you know? So being able to start focusing on, Hey, what could be next for me? You know, it, it, it's a powerful tool. It's a powerful healing tool, but it's also a great way to get excited about what your future could be. Yeah. I always say divorce is not a failure. It is an opportunity and, and your goal setting at the very beginning of the planner is something that, that starts people on that journey. So I, when I saw that, um, because many people will, will think they have come up with ways to handle the finances, or you can hire a CDFA or, you know, finances are something people can go out there and get into, but it's rare to find someone who has the understanding that is going to help people attack that. They always say like the, the future looks like a big black hole mm. and it's not, it's, it's a not. land of opportunity. It is. It absolutely is. And, and it's worthy of you getting excited and hopeful about and focusing on. And again, you need to compartmentalize it as well. Take all that emotional stuff and put it in the right category. That's not something you should be kind of letting spill over to your attorney. Isn't your therapist, you know, a therapist can be your therapist <laughs> or, you know, a friend can, you know, lend a helpful ear, make sure that you are focusing what the, the right thing in the right direction. Yeah. Well, and that is, you know, I, I've said that before. I've had many clients who will call me or get in touch and say, you know, Susan, I just want to vent or I, I just need someone to listen. And, uh, you know, honestly, we are human beings and we care, um, but we are not trained therapists. We don't get that in law school. I wish we did, especially if we knew we were going into family law and yeah. frankly, a therapist or the planner or sitting down and writing a letter to yourself or get a coach, uh, yeah. much less expensive approach to that as well. But it is important to separate the two out. And yeah. uh, it's also, you know, I talked about the ostrich syndrome when it comes to the financial side one of the things I think you've done so beautifully is you have really broken down all of the financial into what to gather, what you need to know, why you need to budget, how to budget, how to figure out what your needs are and you just kind of spoon feed it because yeah. it's over. It's really overwhelming for so many people. That's exactly right. And I, Jenny and I really wanted to make it as simple as possible. It really is like having a personal trainer walk you through. And what's great about 
well, any of the sections, but especially the financial section is you carry that on beyond your divorce. Like that, you have the template for staying on top of your finances and your financial goals for the rest of your life with what we've provided you. And we've made it so simple. It really, we walk you through the steps and they're also in the planner. We help you keep accountable because it's a self-led program, but we help you keep accountable with to-do lists and calendars. So you can break things up into like manageable little bite sizes. But that was the goal was really to make it as kind of seamless and easy as possible for the user. Yeah. The accountability part, just that rings a bell for me. I'm one of those people. I know how, like in the gym, I know how to lift the weights. I know how to, but if I don't have a trainer waiting for me at six in the morning at six in the morning, when I'm supposed to be in the gym, I'm going to be in bed. So having your, yeah, (laughs) it completely (laughs) rings a bell for me. Um, So, you know, another thing that I think the planner does for people is really helps them avoid some of the mistakes that people make, the common mistakes. Um, And, you know, I know you took that into consideration as you were building it out as well. Yeah, that was the goal was to be able to put people in a position where they're they're kind of sidestepping things that normally would would trip people up. So, again, the number there are three huge big ones that come to mind. First is making sure to separate the emotional side from the business side and not cross pollinating. Another is thinking their spouse will take care of them. And that doesn't mean that, you know, you're not on good terms. And even in an amicable situation that you haven't come up with like a, a wonderful tone that you're setting. And this goes into the third mistake is you need to start, um, thinking in terms of me and not we. So that's a mindset shift that you have to practice because you might feel like, Ooh, does that mean I'm trying to set the other person up to fail? Or why do you know, we come out of this bubble, this we bubble, this family bubble, when you're going through divorce and you do really have to start thinking in terms of me and it's okay to invest in myself and to do my homework. That doesn't mean I'm not trying to bury somebody else. I'm trying to lift myself up and make smart choices. Right. And this is available to anyone. So it's like both spouses could be using this same system. Um, And okay, one last thing, number four, I would say another mistake. There's a big difference between what's fair and what's equitable. And (laughs) right. Yes. So um, being able to take time before you're with your attorney or before you're in mediation to kind of think through all of your assets and your finances and start understanding you need to be thinking in terms of what's equitable because what's fair to you might not feel fair to your soon to be ex. So I think those are the the big ones and just not being on leaving, leaving it up to somebody else to get in charge of your details puts you at a huge disadvantage. You are your best advocate and investing your time in, in, in preparing is going to pay off in, in wildly. I mean, it's, you know, first, Many people don't know this, but divorce attorneys call a, a fair the F word of divorce. Um, <laughs> it, it is because, yeah, I mean, what what I think is fair, it may be different from what my attorney, my client thinks is fair, from what yeah. their spouse thinks is fair. And frankly, by the way, folks, from what a judge may think is fair, don't ever leave fairness up to a judge. Um because everybody has that different perception of it. So I, re- I appreciate your making that distinction and equitable, you know, equitable goes to the, the fact that, and you say you, you are your own best advocate. You are also after advocating, you are the best person to make decisions as to what will work for you. And that is what's equitable, right? Yeah. This is what will, will work in my new life. And the distinction there you make of from we to me is also critically important. Um, Everybody loves to throw the narcissist or the selfishness um, aspect of the divorce process around. And in fact, it's actually healthy and normal for people to start thinking about how things are going to affect them alone going forward. So really important. And every little aspect of the planner or taking the time to work through those steps in the the three, you know, sort of main areas that you cover 
is really of critical importance yeah. um, and not leaving it up to, to somebody else. No, um, nobody knows you like you, nobody knows your life. And when you take the time to, you know, do your homework in advance, then when I'm meeting with you, my attorney, I can say, I don't understand this and ask questions and learn. And again, this is all stuff that carries on in your life beyond divorce, really. Um, it's like your, it, it's your owner's manual in a way for your life. <laughs> right. Right. Well, and I think it's important for people to know again, because everybody has different budgets as they go into divorce. The world we live in today, we have people who can afford to, uh, you know, hire entire teams. Um, I love my divorce teams. That's wonderful when you can go full hog and get everybody. But we also have people who truly are DIYing it these days who just don't have the wherewithal to put those funds into it. And what this will do um, in taking this approach will in a very reasonably priced way, allow people to take that control and understand um, their divorce, whether, I mean, it's wonderful to use the planner, but again, I want to emphasize, we're not saying this is a commercial for the planner. Yeah. I get complaints from people who are like, oh, this episode was just about the product. It's not, we're talking about a mindset and we're talking about preparation. And everything we're talking about that I'm sharing with you today, it's all over my TikTok page and it's all over Instagram and Divide and Thrive's website. Because again, we want to, we want to empower you. Like that's the whole purpose of Divide and Thrive, right? So you can find all videos on everything we're talking about, how to go through the process, what you should do, the mindset stuff, as well as humor and support um, there. So if you, again, it's a, it's definitely a broader um, divide and thrive is a bigger package than just one thing. But if you're going to, you know, be searching for something to help walk you through, we did specifically price it. Um, what we felt was like a really fair price because it, again, divorce is one of the most financially unsettling times in your life. We went through it and we get it. And we'd rather, you know, we'd rather reach more people and empower more people than not. I don't have time to take, you know, a weekend course for a thousand dollars. I just need to know what to do. <laughs> so right. that, that's what we, it's, it's everywhere. It's not on every page, please. I hope people utilize it because that's what it's there for. Right. And that's, there's, you know, something about at a time in your life where everything feels so out of control, um, that act of having, you know, I love that you can print it out. I'm still, I'm old school. So I do like, as, as we're looking, right. I have, um, my little pieces of paper in front of me and, and for my colleagues out there who are laughing, cause I'm the tech queen of, of divorce and, and law. Um, but I do enjoy the piece of paper, but there's, uh, getting granular, as you said earlier, I liked the use of that word, sitting down, breaking it down, putting the thought into things. It's, it's actually really calming. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, and it may not always be calming because I'm thinking about the situations where when you get granular with your finances, 90% of the time, I think people find out they don't have enough money to go around. Um, but Balance these two things, people. Knowing you don't have enough money to go around so that you know you need to make adjustments yes. or just ignore it and hope it's all going to work out. And Which let one's anxiety, better? Yeah, let anxiety keep building. That's the thing. You know, I, I'd rather, you know, turn the lights on and look under the bed, you know, because there are no monsters there when you figure out what's triggering you. Okay. If you're staying up at night and you're like, how am I going to make ends meet? That's exactly why you should be investing in figuring out the realities of your life and going through how much money it costs to live your life every month, because it's going to make you feel better. And it's going to put you in a position to navigate those kind of uncertain financial waters and come up with a plan to get you to the other side. Look, I'm sure Susan, I don't need to tell you going through a divorce, you know, the financial hit you take can kind of knock you sideways for a little bit. So preparing in advance helps that be a little less uh, painful, quite frankly, and it, you will recover, but you're going to recover more quickly if you have a plan and a real understanding of where you are financially. So, you know, it, it, 
either way you cut it, it's going to benefit you to know what you have rather than pretend nothing's going on. Right. Or, or treat it like it's a, it's just a fight to, to gouge it out of your soon to be ex spouse. Yeah. Um, because that tends to be the other approach to this is I'm afraid I have fear around lack of money, lack of sufficient funds. So it becomes that battle over trying to get my fair share to use the F word again. Um, and there's really, you know, a great deal of power for both sides. And in, in bringing your, your divorce negotiations to a conclusion, when you understand exactly what's there where you need to make some choices, because it may mean um, the biggest mistake we usually see in a divorce process for many people is this um, decision at the beginning that I have to keep the house. No, under all, in any and all circumstances, I must keep the house without ever looking, uh, to use your phrase, under the hood yeah. of what the house actually costs and what income and money there is to keep it. And what that does is you know, I had one client who dragged her divorce along for God, I think we went on to trial door for about two years. And it wow. was the week before trial where she called me up and said, Susan, you know, I, I just, I don't think I can afford the house. And she had been not wanting to settle or to agree to any settlement that didn't include her keeping the house. And we settled it the next day. Um, and it's not that I hadn't been telling her. So please, anyone out there, don't think I hadn't mentioned to her that the finances probably didn't look good, but she had gotten so emotionally caught there. Um, you know, so your granular, granular approach is it would have saved her so much time and money and effort. I am just remembering one of the first things my attorney said to me is don't be, don't be stuck on this idea that you have to keep the house. If it's going to, if you can't afford to keep the house two years later, and that's exactly, I just put up a blog post on divide and thrive's website, all about, you know, if you're considering keeping the family home, here are things you need to, you know, kind of think through to arrive at, is this going to be a good financial decision for you? Or is this an emotional decision that you're making? It's the most important thing because the, the you don't want to leave yourself open. Sure. I get it. I want the family home. It feels comfortable. I love it. It represents, I have my life here or my kids are in school here, but okay. You have to ask big questions. If you are, if you take over the property, number one, can you afford to buy the other spouse out and still have all the maintenance costs on your own. And let's say you can't float that boat after a year or two, what is your tax exposure going to be? Because it's very different when it's not, you know, the two people yeah. um, so there again, I, I'm with you on this. It's, it's the emotional and the business butting heads and knowing your financial realities helps. It helps a lot. And I know it hurts. I know it sucks to think I have to leave this place where I built my life, where I built a family or I've built a community. It's just a, it's just a space and you can do that. Maybe, you know, exactly in the same town where you are, it's just going to look different. And sometimes, you know what, change is good. Change is not a bad thing, especially if that change is going to put a little pocket money, you know, in the bank. Um, yes. so, <laughs> and then you can decorate a place the way you want. Just be open to change isn't always scary. Change can be a really positive thing. Yeah. I I'm that person. I, my, I, uh, got a new house when I got divorced and it was the first time in my entire life that I got to, as you said, decorate exactly with taking only my taste. And now when I look back on it, I had very bad taste. Um, <laughs> I needed to learn, but it was my house that represented my future and my wants and my desires. And it's part of what helped me heal faster and move forward more quickly. So it, it's, we're using the house as an example. And by the way, I will say, I will find the blog post that you just referenced and I will link to it in the show notes. And that actually makes me think before we hit the end of the episode, you were recently featured in a New York times article. Tell us. I was. Thank you for bringing it up because it's a great resource article. Um, it's Divorce is Hard. Here are ways you can help people going through it. So I was honored to be included. And um, they save the best for last. So, you know, you just know I'm at the bottom. Keep of the scrolling article. down. Yes. 
<laughs> but what was so great is, you know, in addition to my voice being a part of it, there are divorce attorneys, there are other people going through it who are giving you practical advice, you know, for, I spoke to the financial side of things and a way that you can support people going through a divorce or a separation. And if they don't have a lot of money is, you know, think outside of the box. Do you have some hours? Maybe you could do some babysitting help because, you know, if that person has a child and, you know, money is a challenge at this point in time, Childcare is an issue or drop off a dinner or maybe just take them to a movie. There are lots of ways you can, you can help people um, kind of financially that won't negatively impact you. And it's going to make a big difference in their lives. Cause I think a lot of people, you, they don't know what to say or what to do to really help people navigate this time. Um, and on the emotional side, sometimes the most important thing you can do is just say, I'm here to listen. And you don't have to feel like you have to give that person advice at all. You can just say that really sounds tough. And that, I mean, when, when I, found somebody who who kind of took that position and when I was going through my divorce it made a huge difference it made a huge difference anyway I hope everyone checks that article out it's also on on the New York Times website as well as the divide and thrive blog but it's very detailed so there are lots of great ideas yeah well I will for sure be linking to that as well and that's you know, that is an oft uh, forgotten sort of aspect of divorce is um, it is a very common experience in our world. Yeah. Yet when someone is going through that experience, we don't know to whether we should say I'm sorry or good for you or and, and not to know what to do. I love the babysitting tip or the child care tip. Because, you know, one other thing people may not even think of is if people have younger children and they need to go meet with their divorce attorney or some of their professionals or go to court or they may not have somebody. And so I will tell you, I, as a divorce attorney, have been in court more times than I can count where little kids are running around in a place where I would prefer they never have to be because mom or dad didn't have childcare. So another time when parents might need a little help. So love that you, you mentioned that and definitely we'll link to it. Um, so we're running close to the end of time. I don't want to miss telling people where they can get the planner and you have a really generous offer for listeners if they do want to reach out and get it. We do. So Divide and Thrive, you can um, find us. Our website is divideandthrive.net. And we're also on Instagram under Divide and Thrive and TikTok under Divide yes. and Thrive Plan. Where I like, I hooked Susan in a little bit because I did a TikTok about one of these episodes that I found something that was so fascinating. That was actually the first time we connected. It was. It was the first time I'd ever like been in a TikTok. I was like, this is exciting. (laughs) And TikTok is so much fun. And that library of videos that um, are going to be helpful to you going through a split, or even if you're just considering a split, it's going to give you some real practical things to think about. So find, you can find us there, Divide and Thrive there. And on all those places on, on social media, there's our link tree where you can, you can see inside the planner, you can read reviews um, and just, I don't know, utilize the resources at the very least. But if you, if you decide that the planner is the right purchase for you, I'm so excited. (laughs) Number one, thank you for trusting Divide and Thrive. And we are easily accessible. You drop a line, a DM us anywhere and I respond. Yeah. Well, and thank you so much. And you are offering listeners a 20% off discount code. Do you know, do you know what the code will be? I, I, I don't have the code actually. Can we, I'm going to take that from the top again. Cause it froze. Oh, and okay. So, okay. So I'm excited because for listeners and viewers of divorce and beyond, we're going to be offering a special 20% off code. Yes, I know. I'm very excited. And that code is going to be Susan 2022. Uh, but it's only for people who are watching and listening. So there you go. Thank you so much. I, I my listeners, my watchers, my viewers, I know they will appreciate this. Um, so Susan 2022, I will have that in the show notes as well, but you still have to watch or listen to the episode. We want you to get all of the benefits of everything that Alex has just shared with you, because yeah. this goes way beyond, uh, you know, her wealth of knowledge comes from that place of personal experience and importantly, wanting to help. And so there are so many resources. I just, you know, Alex, thank you for what you and Jenny are doing and for getting out there on TikTok. And 
<laughs> and creating this, all these wonderful resources for people. I truly appreciate it. And I can tell you as a divorce professional, my colleagues will appreciate anyone who comes into their office or zooms into their meeting uh, as organized as you did with your binder. Oh, thank you. That means a lot to me. And I love being a part of this community. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful community. And, uh, you know, reach out, get in touch with Alex, DM her, get to her through Instagram, the website, TikTok. And thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. Thanks, everybody. 